ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله after praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and passing salutation upon his messenger muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him we go ahead with another class of explaining a book which is Usul al Sunnah for Al Imam Al Mubajjal Ahmad al Muhammad Rahimahullah. And we are at the moment on point number three or number four according to my book, which is this version or this copy. So that is number four, Watarkul Khusumat and the abandonment of controversies. I mean, I don't know which point is it? Same point. It's on point number four. And the abandonment of contrafizis. That means it's the same numbering in that book as well that you have. And can I have that book as well? Just to show this well, the version to the camera. This is the version of that, the new version of the book. So it is the same book actually. Anybody's got another different version from this? Alhamdulillah. So everybody's the same. But if you buy another book, there will be different pointing, different numbering. Al Khusumat. Here, controversies. Controversies means. That is al khusumat which are due, that have no right. That means they are based upon falsehood. For example, the controversies which is, happens between Ahl al Batil to Ahl al Sunnah. So when they argue with Ahl al Sunnah, they are Ahl al Kalam. The words that are coming from their mouth is not based upon qala Allah, qala Rasuluh, but is actually philosophy. As for Khusumat Ahl Sunnah to Ahl Bid'ah, which is vice versa, from the dispute of Ahl Sunnah when they debate the people of Ahl Bid'ah, then they are doing it upon Haqq and they will be rewarded for that. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he, so, he says in Surah An Nisa, verse 140, وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ or وَقَدْ نُزِّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ as in the Warsh, قَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُ بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ It has been revealed to you, uh, O Muslims, followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the Sahaba, in the book that if you heard the verses of Allah to be disbelieved in and mocked, then don't sit with them until they go and speak or, or in, indulge into a different speech. Otherwise, you will be like them. For verily, Allah will gather the hypocrites and the kafirin, the disbelievers. In Allah, Jami al Munafiqina wal Kafirina fi Jahannam Jamia. They will be gathered, the hypocrites and the disbelievers, in the hellfire altogether. So, here in this ayah, we'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us not to sit with those who mock the verses of Allah. And those people from Ahl al Batil, they do mock the verses of Allah and they do mock the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah, whether it is explicitly or implicitly, they do so. Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha, she says in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, Abghadu rijali ila Allah ala laddu al khasim The most disliked person to Allah is the one who is alad, ladud, is the one who is all the time disputing and he has no willingness to listen to the haqq. He has the arrogance. Well, somebody talking there. Okay, here it's shown. When Abdullah ibn Amr, an authority of Abdullah ibn Amr, in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Arba'un, four things. Man kunna fih kana munafiqan khalisa. That if they were to be in a person, he will be a pure hypocrite. Woman cannot fihi khasla, and if one of the people has got one of those characteristics, then he has a character from those who are hypocrites until he abandons it that is number one if he is to be trusted he will betray number two and if he talks he would lie and if he is to to have a treaty or covenant he would prove to be treacherous and if he disputes he will go uh, means out of the blues he will just come out with foul language and you will not be disputing or debating in a way which is a memorable one. 
Also was narrated on the authority of Abu Umama in Sunan ibn Majah, which is a hadith sahih. That the Prophet Sallallahu he said, ما ضل قوم بعد هدى كانوا عليه إلا أوت الجدل. That is, any people who have been misguided after they were guided, people who have been misguided and been misled, after they were upon guidance, then they will be uh, people who are people who are argumentative. They will argue. Because they left the haq, they came to the bottle, and they came to the bottle because of philosophy, kalam. That is why you'll find them argumentative people. Then the Prophet of Allah recited the following verse in Surah Al-Zukhruf. مَا ضَرَبُهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَلَلَا بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِيمٌ They did not set that parable for you except for the dispute with you, Messenger of Allah. Those people are khasimun. That means they're all the time argumentative. Also, it is narrated in Sunan Abi Dawood on the authority again of Abu Umama radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu he had said أَنَا زَعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي رَبَضِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقَّا that is, I am a person claiming that there will be a, parad- a place in paradise, in Rabat, in a high place in paradise. He who abandons al mira which is disputing and argumentation, even though that he is upon the haq. Why? Because he could see that that argument is leading nowhere. It's actually leading to a dispute and the heart to be split and that person is not listening. وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَزِحَ And also I will... Uh, as well guarantee for a house in the middle of Jannah for those who abandon the lies even that they are to be jesting or joking. وَبِبَيْتٍ أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ In the highest point of Jannah in Al-Firdaus for those لِمَنْ حَسُنَ خُلُقُهُ The ones who have good manners. In Sunan Ibn Majah also it is also it is narrated on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he said لا تعلم العلم لتباهوا به العلماء Don't learn the knowledge in order to compete with those who are scholars in order just to boast about yourself ولا لتماروا به السفهاء and not also to dispute and debate with those who are ignorant ولا تخيروا به المجالس أو تخيروا به المجالس and not to be spoken about that you are the best in a circle that is you are showing off he who does so, then the fire, the fire. This is his destiny. Also, it is narrated in Muslim and Sunan in Sahih Al Hakim, Fil Mustadrak, and Fil Mustadrak Sahih Al Hakim, and on the authority of Allah ibn Umar, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Man a'ana ala khusuma, he who had helped, aided from any point, from any aspect, uh, on a dispute on something which has no benefit of, بِغَيْرِ حَقْ and he has no due right in it, كَانَ فِي صَخَطِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْزِعْ He will be un- in the wrath of Allah until he pulls out, and he, until he steps out. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he who had helped in order to make a, you know, an issue to be argumentative, argumentative issue, an issue which is to make a, a heart pulling away from each other, then, and you have no due right in it, there's no haqq in it, then he's in the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah, until he pulls out. And also we say that all types of disputes, all types of argumentatives, in the deen, in, for the sake of, for the sake of, that is your satisfaction, not for the sake of Allah, for your own satisfaction, that I won, or for the sake of riya, or for the sake of whims and desire, for the sake of showing your muscles that I am the best here, I am the one, and there is nobody else. As like Sheikh Al-Albani used to teach us, used to tell us this person, he said, Ya ma hada aliki gaddi. Come on, land, go harder, for there's nobody upon you more than powerful than me. Powerful in everything, physical or mental, whatever. So this person is showing his muscles, and that is why he disputes with the people to show them that, you know, nobody can defeat me in debate. This is all of it is to be blameworthy. It is not to be praiseworthy. So all of those types of jidal and khisam and all of that disputes, even if it's in the religion for the sake of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is to be blameworthy. So the person, he has to assess the situation. Am I going to be benefiting from such debate or am I not? Because it's very important to know that sometimes if you debate with the people of Ahlul Ahwa and it's going to result in the people to misunderstand the message, then you are actually misleading the people. And I'll give you an example. So this person, is this scholar is called Ibn Malik. And he had seen when he traveled from the west to the east, Bilad al-Sham. So a person who was giving talks 
and this person has got no knowledge. So he told the people, he's got no knowledge. And this person is not known amongst them because he comes from the West. So verily, when he said that to them, he said, how do you prove that he's got no knowledge? He said, well, make me a debate with him. And that's the mistake that he has done. To make a debate with a person who's got no knowledge and in front of people who are ignorant. How do those people ignorant are going to know who is the winner? They will not know. So this scholar had asked him the first question, which is any person who knows Quran, straight away he will be able to answer the question. He said, ما مخرج حرف الألف? What is the articulation point of the letter A? So this person has no idea whatsoever of articulation point. So he came up with this following answer. Alif, ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha, dal, dal, ra, zin, shin, sin, sa, ta, ta. And he counted all the alphabetic. The people were astounded. He was asked with one question. He gave 21, 28 answers. So the people now, they thought that he's much better than what they thought at the beginning. So Ibn Malik, which is the scholar's name, he had died two weeks later. Why? Because of his grief and sorrow in his heart that he had tried to make the people understand that this person is ignorant, but he actually... Uh, uh, misrepresented the message. The message was not given to the people in the right manner. So you have to be careful when you dispute with the people. So if you think that you are upon haq and the dispute is leading nowhere, leave it. Leave the argument. If you think that, for example, that this brother is, mashallah, is good, but at the moment, if I'm going to go into this issue, even if it's an issue of fiqh, that it will going to lead to a heat, then I would leave it. And maybe I will go to a, a different way of approaching this person. I might go and tell another person to talk to him. Because as I said, sometimes at those points, even as little as fiqh issues, there might be a split between the brothers. And they do split between brothers and they do have boycotting brothers. Why? Because, you know, I see that if the person comes to the masjid and the prayer is already done the jama'ah, I see that there is no need to make a jama'ah and it's not from the sunnah. The other person, no, I've got a proof. So they... I'm boycotting him for that because of a dispute regarding an issue that we do have difference among the scholars regarding that issue. And each person, he has his own proof. So you have to have fiqh al-khilaf. Fiqh al-khilaf is the knowledge of how to differ from one person to another. Yes, you could have a, a, a person who is actually just for the sake of being different from you, you know, he wants to adapt such an opinion. But if you ask him why, he said, as long as I am really different from you, I'm happy. That's the person that you want to keep away from. Uh, the person you just want to differ for you for the sake of being different. That's all. But the person who's got a very respectable sort of uh, 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 verdict or fatwa from the sheikh and you think this is correct, then you have to respect it. And that is why we say if you had prayed behind a person who is upon the Hanafi madhab or upon the Shafi'i madhab or whatever, and this person he had looked at the Hanafi madhab regarding, for example, raising up the hands uh, after the ruku'ah. He says that it's not really authentic. So we have to respect him. And if I pray behind him, and I know that this person, he's coming not from blind following, but is actually from respectful uh, following of what he thinks is correct, then I have to really imitate him and not to raise up my hands when I go from the ruku'ah up to Sami Allah liman hamida. I have to Make sure that I'm following my imam. It's an important point. Otherwise, they're going to be... Now, for example, that the Shafi'is, that, which is, we know that's a wrong issue, but Imam Shafi'i, he thought it was a hadith sahih. So those who are followers of the Imam Shafi'i at the moment, if a person was not really knowing the hadith properly, and he believes Imam Shafi'i is a great man, so in the Salat al-Fajr, in the second rak'ah, and after recitation of the Fatiha and the Surah, and then... Make into the ruku, and then Sami Allah liman hamida. The Shafi'i followers they make qunut, and that is every fajr. And even if they don't make the qunut, if the Imam did not make the qunut, they will ask him to make two sajda for sahu because it's part of the prayer. So if that Imam, which I respect and I think he's not a blind follower, but he believes that that hadith, which is hadith narrated by Isa ibn Mahan, uh, Abu Ja'far al Razi, this is his kunya, that is the Prophet. Um, he had, which is in the authority of Anas, he had been making the qunut of the fajr all the time until he had departed the dunya. If you thought this hadith is authentic, then we have to follow the imam. So I can't, for example, leave the imam in his qunut and I sit down because it's not really right. 
So imagine that the people, his imam is say, say, ah, he's doing qunut in the second rak'ah and everybody sitting behind him and not uh, you know, following the imam. Inna al imam bi. I have to follow the imam. But if this person is just actually, he knows the haqq, but because of the sake of that, uh, well, you know, the masjid is shafi'i and if I don't do this, I'm going to be checked up. No salary. Don't follow him. Do you understand me? This, this person is implementing what he's implementing, not for the sake of Allah, but actually for the sake of the salary. Then I will not follow him. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Brothers, for, for, yeah, close the gaps. Close the gaps as much as possible. The connection of the body is very important. See, when the person is on his own, he will leave the class. But when he's together, mashallah, he will not. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullahu khayra. Right, now coming to also we say, that is, if the person, he wants to make uh, a, de a debate regarding a point, then we say, Alhamdulillah, in the right manner, no problem. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawridati al-hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. And reason with them, there's ud'u, call to the sake of your Lord, bil hikmah, in the wisdom, in the way which is better, ha, in hikmah, wal mawridati al-hasana, and good reasoning, good preaching. And argue with them in the best of ways. That's how you argue, the best of the ways. You're not coming, as I said, to show your muscles. So if you are making khusuma or dispute with the people of the bid'ah, make it with the conditions that I have said, not in front of ignorant people. Make them with sidq. You have sort of sincerity. That you're trying to make this person come to the haqq. And you are making as well that the haqq to prevail. Then all of that, inshallah, will be praiseworthy. Prophet of Allah, he had made a number of debates with the mushrikun. Because the mushrikun that tried to beat him in the debate, okay, like Az Zubri, when he had heard the Prophet وسلم, reciting the verse where Allah Azza wa Jal he says in his book regarding those people who worship other than Allah, Hum wa ma yabudun hasabu jahannam. Those who worship those things and the ones who have been worshipped, they are in the hellfire. They are the fuel of the fire. So he came back and he's from the mushrikun. He said, well, if I was there, you know, when he recited that verse, I would have debated Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad didn't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's a kafir. He said, verily, we people worship the angels. Does that mean the angels are in the hellfire? So he's like trying that he won the point. And when he was, uh, Prophet of Allah is informed of what az zubari had said regarding this, that the, we worship the angels, and the angels are going to be in the hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, that for those people who had al-husna, that the ones who are before, they will have the husna. That means they are already sabaqat lahum min al-husna. Already we have ordained for them to be in Jannah. So for those who had uh, uh, approved the worship of their people to themselves, they'll be in the hellfire. But for those who did not, like Isa ibn Maryam, he did not ask the people to worship him, nor his mother, Ask the people to say that she is the mother of God. And those people who had worshipped the angels, the angels never accepted or approved these people that to worship them. So they will not be in the hellfire. But those people who took them as a tawagheet, they are the ones in the hellfire, not the ones who have been worshipped. Uh, we also say that regarding the قَالْ وَتَرْكُ الْجُلُوسِ مَعَ أَصْحَابِ الْأَحْوَى This is point number five. An abandonment, the abandonment, that is of sitting with the people of Ahl, Ahl Ahwa'ud desires, whims and desires. So you see, sitting with these people, it is haram, very little is haram. For uh, Prophet he said, which is narrated in Sahih al Imam al Bukhari and Muslim, and the wording for Imam Muslim, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَبَهَ مِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ سَمَّ اللَّهِ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ If you have seen that those people who follow the one the ayat is got which is got mutashabih. They're not locked in place. They are carrying with more than one meaning. They don't go to the ones locked in place. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he made the book, Minhu Ayatun Muhkamatun Hunna Umul Kitaba. Wa ukharu mutashabihat. Allah he said in the book, some some verses are locked in place. And others carry more than one meaning. So for those who have something wrong in their hearts, they don't go to the verses which have locked in place, they go to the ones what? have more than one meaning. So to the, really, to take from them whatever they like. That is the ones who got something, disease in their hearts. They will follow 
those ayat, those verses would have more than one meaning. In order what? In order to make fitna. That is what's happening. Those people of Al-Zayr, they don't go to the verses which are, mashallah, clear cut. They'll go to the one which have more than one meaning. For example, Ahlul Bid'a from uh, we're going to talk about these issues when we talk about seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mu'tazila, they, for example, uh, say it is not possible for the person to see Allah. It's not in this dunya talking about, in the hereafter. So they resorted to an ayah. But this ayah, it is not locked in place. It's got more, more than one meaning. And they did not go to the ayah which is locked in place. It's got one meaning. That's a locked in place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those people who are in Jannah. They're going to be, they are wujuhun nadira. They are, mashallah, faces glowing. Ila rabbiha nadira. They're looking at their Lord. They don't go to this verse. They go to another La tudrikul absar. La tudrikul absar. That eyes cannot encompass them. We're going to discuss this issue. Encompass them has got more than one meaning. That means encompass them for three dimensions. Encompassing them is in the dunya. But the other one talks about the akhirah. So there are lots of meanings of that one. They took that one because it's got one more than one meaning. And they took the meaning that which is suitable to their bid'ah and suitable to their deviated methodology. So that is Ahlul Ahwa. So we say that if you've seen those people who follow those things, then they are the ones whom Allah had named. Be aware of them. This is a warning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Messenger of Allah asked us to keep away from Ahlul Bid'ah. As for hadith Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, which is a long hadith, and I would like to narrate it for you because it's got lots of meaning in it. But I'm going to go to the last bit of it, which is very important. When the Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said that the people at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that means the companions, كانوا يسألون عن الخير. كانوا يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه الخير. They used to ask the Prophet of Allah about the good, the good times, the good things. But I used to ask him about the what? Those tribulation times, the evil times, in order to know what is going to take place, what am I going to do if I live to see them? Now, this is from the fiqh of Hudayfa, but remember, the Sahaba used to ask about the good. So the principle is all the time to ask about what? Good. So that people say, oh, you see, this is the yes to ask about the evil. It was only one person was asking about the evil. But all the companion was asking about what? The good. So it's not, for example, to sit here and to ask me, uh, which one should we not listen to? And I'm going to, all my lecture, don't listen to this, don't listen to that, don't listen to this, don't listen to that. And you're going to come out of what? What is the knowledge of gain? Don't listen to this, don't listen to that, don't listen to this, don't listen to that. No knowledge. You have gained nothing. Apart from no listen. So I'm going to listen to whom? To cats? Dogs? What am I going to listen to? Nothing to listen to. That's what is being actually adopted by some of those Brothers, well, I'm going to call them not Salafis, but they're also brothers who are actually giving the negative of the Salafis. Not really. The Salafiyah, all of it based upon La ilaha illallah. I'm asking now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he had given himself the description, and he said, Did he describe himself by the negative or always by the positive? Meaning, did he describe himself that he is not as looking as the creature. His hand is not looking like the creation. His uh, eyes is not looking like the creation. Does he describe himself like this? No. But he described himself with the positive. Because it's not from the way of uh, uh, praising Allah the Almighty by comparing him to his creation. So for example, if the queen uh, of England, for example, and you want to say some words to flatter her, so you should... You are not. So you are. <laughs> you start. With, you are not uh, uh, stinky like those people who stink in the street. Is that the way to praise that? You say, "What? Well, get out of my place!" Uh, you are not as stinky as they. Uh, you can't. So you can't compare Allah, the Almighty, to His creation. He said that you are. He is, does. He has got a finger, but it's not looking like our finger. He has got a shin, but it's not like our shin. It's not really. This is not praising Allah. It's actually. Lowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to compare it with something which is much, is a creation. And Allah is the creator. Laysa kamithlicha. So Allah, when he came to negation, he came into negation with general. There's nothing Allah come to him. And, wa al basir. But when he came to affirmation, he said, and he is the all hearing and the all seeing. And I'm pointing with my two fingers because Abu Huraira pointed with his two fingers because he saw the Prophet of Allah pointed with his two fingers. Laysa, wa al basir. So you understand what is the hearing? 
and when he sends the basir. But does he hear like us? Of course, no. But we don't say he hears, but not like us. No, we say he hears, which is suitable to his majesty. He sees what is suitable to his majesty. We don't have to compare. He does not hear like us. What is this? He does not like hear like the fish, like, like the whale. That's not really praising Allah the Almighty. Coming back again. So the people used to ask the Prophet ﷺ about the good. But for me, I used to ask him about the evil. Jazakallah khayran to warn us. So he said, Messenger of Allah, we are in a good time. After we were in a bad time. Jahiliya, paganism, uh, lots of chaos. Allah brought you and have abundance of good. After this good messenger of Allah, is it going to be evil? Prophet ﷺ, he said, yes. And he went quiet. He did not explain anything else. He says, yes. That means Hudayfa don't ask. So he did not ask. And that evil which took place, a dispute among the companions. And when the companions are mentioned, hold. Don't say anything except for the good words. Stop saying, oh, yes, Mu'ayya radiallahu an, yes, uh, oh. Because, for example, those people start with Hisham ibn Awr and Mu'ayya ibn Abi Sufyan, then they go into the companions. So these are the gates. They enter from them, and then they will start insulting the companions. Hold. When my companions have been mentioned in a bad way, don't indulge, don't talk about it. They have done what they have done upon Ishtihad. So if the one who's made a mistake, he's still rewarded. And the one who's done correct, he's got double reward. So they are fluctuating between the reward and double reward. You are fluctuating between sin and many sins. Okay, don't indulge yourself into such an issue. One sin or multiple sins. So why are you, I'm going to talk about this issue. So he said, nothing. Yes, messenger of Allah. Okay, about after that evil, is there going to be good? I don't know how even a man is going to be living to see that good after the evil, but he wants to, Jazakallah khairan, he's teaching, that's Allah. He said, is that after that evil going to take place? Is it going to be good? He said, yes, but it's tainted. Fihi dakhan. It's polluted. It's got smoke into it, tainted, haze. He said, wa ma dakhnuhu ya Rasulullah? How it is tainted? So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, qawmun ta'arifu minhu ma tunkir. That is people, you know some, and you dispute some. They are people, that is people that you do something that you approve and something that you don't disapprove. قال يا رسول الله أبعد ذلك الخير من شر. This tainted good is going to be followed by evil. He said yes. دعاء على أبواب جهنم. They will be callers on the gates of the fire. من أجابهم إليها قذفوها. Who responds to their call, they will chuck them in the hellfire. صفهم لنا يا مسنجر رب الله. Describe them for us, مسنجر رب الله. He said. They are from our skin. And they talk the same language of ours. That means Arabs. They're not Pakistani. <laughs> they are Arabs. The ones who are going to lead that fitna are Arabs. Same. Allahu Akbar. And even some of the narration he said, ins. That they are, they have the hearts of what? Devils. But in the human being huh? figure. They, come, they, they look at them as a human being. But from inside, a'udhu billah, shayateen. Messenger of Allah. So what do you uh, advise me if I live to see such a time? So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِلْزَمْ جَمَاعَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِمَامَهُمْ If you have a Muslimin, an Imam, go to them, stick to them. Regardless of this Imam, tyrant or not tyrant, it doesn't matter. Just stick to them. Messenger of Allah. They didn't have any body, main body of Muslims, nor they have an Imam. He said, Run in the land. Huh? Run in a If you heard about a Khalifa, somewhere anywhere, in the Muslim, go to him. If you need me to lash you back, and he to take your money, go to him. So here, he said to him, go and look for a messenger of Allah, there is no Khalifa. He said, This is the quotation I wanted. He said, keep away from all the firaq, all the partisans, regardless of their name. Just keep away from them onto the origin, the asal. Salaf al-Salih, Sahaba. Irtazil al-Faraq kullaha. Walaw anta abba ala jid'i shadra. Wa anta ala thalik. Even if you bite on the root. Root means what? The root of the religion, the root of the deen, until death comes to you while you are like this. Bite on the tree and they stay like that. 
Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith of Imran ibn Husayn, which is in Sunan Abi Dawood, and this is the hadith of Dajjal. The Prophet Sallallahu said, فَمَنْ سَمِعَ بِالدَّجَّالِ فَلْيَنْأَ عَنْ He who had heard about the Dajjal, then let him keep as much as possible away from him. فَلْيَنْأَ عَنْ فَوَاللَّهِ by Allah, inna rajula la yati. The man would come to him. mu'min, And he believes he's mashallah a strong believer. I'm not going to care about the Dajjal. He's not going to twist my mind. I'm a powerful believer. الشبهات, he will follow the Dajjal because of the doubtful things that this Dajjal will throw into him or onto him. Too many things, it's going to confuse him. This person's got power. So much power. They're going to talk about the Dajjal. The Dajjal is going to discuss him. So much power that he would make even the parents of someone who are dead already to come out. But they're not their parents. They are shayateen who come to help him at his service. They will resemble his father and mother in the same face. So he thinks father and mother came out of the grave. And they're telling him, my dear son, follow this man. He's upon the haqq. So how can you hold yourself? How can you say that I'm a believer? So please, brother, don't say that you are a very powerful. Soon as you hear about the Dajjal, run for your life. Run because he's going to throw shubuhat onto you. He's going to catch your heart. قَالْ لِمَا يَبْعَثُ مِنَ الشُّبُهَاتِ So here we say, فِرَّ مِنَ الْمَجْذُومِ فِرَارَكَ مِنَ الْأَسَادِ You know when the leprosy, leprosy which is a contagious disease. So we say that, Flee, run away from the leprosy person who's been struck with leprosy, just like you run away from the person from the lion. How do you run away from the lion? You look back, you don't look back. If you know there's a lion, you don't even look back, you don't want to look back. You keep running. It's the same thing that you do with Ahl al Bidah, you keep running. So, if the leprosy of the body, which is a disease in the body, we flee away from it just like we flee from and run away from the lion. We have to as well flee from those who's got the disease of the hearts, the bid'ah, more than we run away from that body disease. Because the intellectual disease is much worse. So the shubuhat. And wallahi, if we compare ourselves with the salaf, how they used to treat this matter, how they used to treat the people of Ahlul bid'ah, we would have found ourselves to be falling short. We're not really saying the right thing. We are not as firm as those the people of Ahl al-Salaf. I'm going to quote some quotations here. Abdullah ibn Abbas, number one. He says, لا تجالسوا أهل الأهوى Don't sit with the people of whims and desire. The ones who are innovators. فَإِنَّ مُجَالَسَتَهُمْ مُنْرِضَةٌ لِلْقُلُوبِ For very sitting with them, it make your heart sick. الشريعة للأجري This is the book I'm quoting from. It was said to the Awzai. This is Al-Ibana ibn Battah. And Ibn Battah, not Ibn Butta. Ibn Batta, al ukburi the Sunni. Ibn Butta, Shi'i. But even though they're written the same way. Butta, Shi'i, Batta, Sunni. Ibn Batta, al ukburi he's in his book, Al-Ibana. He quotes from al Zaid. was said to him that a man, he would say, that I sit with the people of Ahl Sunnah, and I sit with the people of Ahl Al-Bid'ah. So al Zaid he said, هذا رجل يريد أن يساوي بين الحق والباطل. This person, he wants to make equalization. Equality between the haqq, which is the truth, and the batil, which is the falsehood. A'udhu billah. Sufyan al-Thawri, in Sharh al-Sunnah al-Baghawi, he says, Al-Bid'atu ahabbu ila Iblis min al-Ma'asiyah. Very the bid'ah, the innovation, is more dear to the shaytan than the sin. Because the sin, fa'inna al-Ma'asiyah yutabu minha. The sin, usually it is the case, the person will repent from it. Wal-Bid'atu la yutabu minha. But the bid'ah, usually it is the case, the people will not keep away from because the innovator he thinks himself is getting closer to Allah do you understand me where the sinner he is about to repent to Allah so for example a person who is drunk and a person who is shaking his head Allah Allah so this person who is drunk but he's not saying Allah he's saying, whatever he's saying he's a drunk person saying fear Allah oh yes inshallah Allah, I'm really he might cry he might say, you know, but he is weak but he wants to repent but this person goes Allah Allah. You say, fear Allah. He said, what are you talking about? I'm saying Allah, Allah. What am I going to fear? That's why I'm saying Allah, Allah. I'm fearing Allah. So he's not going to, he's not going to repent. Why is he going to repent? Because he thinks he's getting closer to Allah. And that is why, as I said, this bid'ah is closer to the Iblis, more lovable, more dearer to the Iblis 
than the sin. al dhahabi he quoted a quotation that everybody needs to learn it, which is in Sirah Alam al in the Tarjama, that is biography of Sufyan al Thawri, which he had said. In this biography of his, he mentions, قال, Verily, Al Qulubu Dabi'ifa wa Shubahu Khattaha. Aktharu A'immatu Salaf, that is, Ala Hadha Tahvir. Most of the Imma of Salaf, as Salih, the predecessors, they used to make sure that they will say the following statement. That is, Al Qulubu Dabi'ifa. The hearts are weak. They're very weak, fragile. They're very fragile. وَالشُّبَهُ خَطَّافَ And the doubtful matters, they have got hooks. So they might hook your heart. Never say, oh, I'm powerful. No. Wallahi, I'm going to write for you now. People who have been upon the haqq, yet they've been hooked. People upon the knowledge, they've been hooked. Abu al-Jawza, rahimahullah. One of the great scholars, he said, لَا يُجَاوِرَنِي Verily, to be accompanying monkeys and pigs, better for me, more safer for me to accompany those people of Ahl al Bid'ah. So, I have monkeys and pigs on my right and my left, it's better for me to have what? People of Ahl al Bid'ah. Why? The monkey, the pigs, what are they going to do? But those people, they're going to do a lot to your heart and they might destroy your religion. Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, he says, Get close to Allah by hating those people from Ahlul Bida, Ahlul Irja. From the most dearest actions and deeds to our hearts. So this means we cannot, you know, like give them our majalis and circles to go and give talks. We cannot as well to sit with them and make other people sit with them. Ishaq, rahimahullah, he said, I have heard Abu Abdullah Imam Ahmad saying, Akhzallahu al Karabisi. This is one of the innovators. May Allah disgrace him. لا يجالس ولا يكلم. Don't sit with him. Don't talk to them. ولا تكتبوا كتبا. And don't write from his book, from his books. ولا يجالسوا من يجالسوا. And the person who sits with him, don't sit with that person. Do you understand that? So it is an innovation transferred from one person. So the person who sits with Ahl al-Bid'ah, don't sit with that person. Because he will not sit with him except that he's got something in common. Remember. إِنْ خَفِيَتْ عَنَّا بِدْعَتُهُ فَلَنْ تَخْفَى عَنَّا أُلْفَتُهُ That if his bid'ah is hidden from us, his companion will not be hidden from us. So if he's hiding his bid'ah from me, I will know from his associates. Who does he associate himself with? So you can't find a person who is, mashallah, upon the Salaf manhaj, associating somebody with a Sufi all the time. There's something there in common. There is. It has to be. Unless that person wants to go and make him hidayah, to give him hidayah, not to go all the time with him and walk with him. And that is why we say, no, tell me who is his friend and I'll tell you who is that person. Abu Dawood al-Sajistani rahimahullah, he said, Qultu li Abi Abdullah, in his masail he said, that I have said to Imam Ahmad, ara rajulan ma'a ahli sunnah wa'a rajul ma'an ahli al-bida'ah. I see a man from ahli sunnah, he's accompanying a person from ahli al-bida'ah. Shall I leave him? Atruku kalama, shall I, so you know, uh, leave him, should I not listen to his, whatever he's admonishing, this person who is from Ahl Sunnah, but he sits with Ahl Bid'ah. He said, no, but what to alimuhu, anna rajul alladhi ra'aytuhu, or ra'aytahu ma'u sahibu bid'ah. That is, you should really tell that person of Ahl Sunnah, that you who you are accompanying is a person from Ahl Bid'ah. So if he had abandoned accompanying that person, then talk to him. Otherwise, فَأَلْحِقْهُ bih. Make him to follow that man. He's the same. Because if you warn him against Ahl Bid'ah and he knows that he's Ahl Bid'ah, but he still talks to him, that he's from him. And that is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, Al Mar'u bi khidmi. The person is to be judged by the one who is accompanying. Because the Prophet he said, Al Mar'u ala dini khalili. The person is in the religion of his closest companions. Al Imam Ahmad, he says, Man lam yurabbi' bi Ali ibn Abi Talib al Khilafa, fala tukalimu, wala tunakihu. The person who does not Ali, say Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an is the fourth Khalifa like the Khawarij, then don't huh, talk to him, nor give him your daughters or marry from their daughters. One person he was asked, you know, man, he wants to marry this woman, but she's from the Khawarij. It's okay to marry her. He said, I will not put a piece of coal into my arms, a piece of burning coal into my arms. She's from the Khawarij. How can I, you know, put a coal, fire? She's fire. So I'm going to marry somebody like this. She's going to bring fire to my house. The Khawarij, and the Khawarij, we're going to be talking about them, inshallah. Al-Khallal, also in his book, he says, 
al marudi which is one of the series of Imam Ahmad, he said that Imam Ahmad, he had been mentioned to him, Al-Harith Al-Muhasibi. He said, Harith Al-Muhasibi, he is the foundation of all bid'ah. He is the one even took the jahm, kalam jahm. So he is the one, don't follow him and the follow the followers of him, except for one person, Ibn Al-Alaf, who verily he died, we don't know about his case. So, warn against Al-Harith. Severe warning, clear warning. And if any person goes to him, and still been after clarification that this person of Ahl al-Bid'ah, then warn against these people as well. And abandon these people and boycott them. For very little harith wal iyadu billah, he has no tawbah. Because every time you talk to him, talking to him the haqq, he is denying the haqq. So keep away from him. This is in Abi Ya'la, uh, in Tabaqat for Abi Ya'la, rahmatullahi alayhi. And Imam Ahmad, when you look at his biography, you'll find how strong he is upon the sunnah. And deservedly, he has got the title Imam al-Sunnah. He is the Imam of Ahl al-Sunnah, rahmatullahi alayhi. <laughs> Ibn Muflih al-Maqdisi fi al-Adab al-Shari'iyah, he says, Fasl, chapter, fi al-Isti'ana bi ahl al-Ahwa, that is to seek help with the people of the desires and the people of the book in the state, in the dawla, in the country. Abu Ali al Hussein he says, I have entered Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and a messenger from the Khalifa, al-Khalifa al-Mutawakkil, not the Khalifa al-Ma'moon, nor al-Wathiq, nor al-Mu'tasr, because they were on Abtizal. Al-Mutawakkil, who came later, he brought it to the Sunnah. So the Khalifa came to him, uh, sent, sent him a messenger to ask him. He's asking, Al-Isti'ana bi ahl al-Ahwal, to seek help in the army or in the, state, in the state with those people of Ahl al-Ahwal, whims and desire, Ahl al-Bid'ah. Ahmad, he said, لا يستعانوا بهم, don't seek help with them. He said, okay, but you could seek help from Christian and Jews. And you don't seek help from them. For verily, Christian and Jews, they don't call to their religions. By these people, they call to their deviant sect. And this is very, you know, important issue. And even and Imam Ahmad, he had made as well more details of this. He said, verily, that is when he was asked, that is Al-Jahmiyyah, Imam Ahmad, he said, you can't seek help regarding the Sultan and regarding the army. You don't seek from the Jahmiyyah, the Ahl al-Bid'ah. But the Christian and the Jews, he said, no problem about them. So Imam Ahmad, he said, Verily, even the Christian, the Jews are mushrik, but the Muslims will not be deceited with them. They will not be fooled by them because they know the Christian and Jews. But the other ones, they dress up like us. They got beard and they might say, you know, they use the Quran and the Sunnah. and That's how they will catch the people. It is very important to know that the people of Ahl al-Bidah, they will turn the whole country upside down. Coming back, so Sheikh Muhammad al Wahab he says, in al-Durar al-Saniyyah, Muhammad Wahab, rahimahullah, he said, also at tawil al-Fasid, this is the misinterpretation, which is corrupted interpretation, in order to reject the text, it is not a the excuse for those who are done it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give an excuse for Iblis, when he had his shubuha, when he asked him to make the prostration, he said, you made me better than him, I'm not going to prostrate. So he did not give him an excuse of this, misinterpretation or wrong interpretation. So the same thing we say that this will not be given an excuse for those people who make deliberate misinterpretation of the Nusus, but actually it will increase in his kufr. So we say for that person who was coming from out of ignorance, we will teach him. But those people who are Ahl al-Bidah, they know the Haqq and they still are deliberately doing what they're doing, then we say they are to be dealt differently. If we are capable of defeating them, then we will punish them, but if we were not, we'll leave them aside and keep away from them. So after, alhamdulillah, we have said what we have said, we come to the, um, um, the effect of Ahl al-Bida' and the characteristics of Ahl al-Bida'. First of all, I just said to you and I promised you that I said that you will find that even the scholars or the people in the people of knowledge, when they are with the company of a person of Ahl al-Bida', they can be easily hooked. This story had happened, and Imam al dhahabi he narrated for us in Tadkirat al-Huffaz and al Sirah al-Alam al-Nubala, he says, Verily Abu al-Walid al-Baji, he says in his book, Ikhtisar Farq al-Fuqaha. That is, and he's, uh, which is the, uh, uh, been, uh, this book is, belongs to Abu Bakr al-Baqillani. He says that Abu Dharr al-Harawi, he told us that he was, you know, affiliated to the Ash'ari Madhab. And Abu Dharr al-Harawi is a well-known person of knowledge. So I asked him, how did you get this Ash'ari Madhab? 
He said, well, really, I was with my, walking with my sheikh, Abu al-Hasan al-Daraqutni. Al-Daraqutni, he's a great scholar, a scholar, an imam. Al-Daraqutni, he is the one who criticized some hadith in Imam al-Bukhari. Al-Daraqutni, he said, he was walking and then we met Abu Bakr ibn al-Tayyib al-Ash'ari. He's a Shari person. So al-Daraqutni, he kissed his face, kissed his eyes, and... When we left, I asked him, why have you done this to this person? He said, verily, he is the imam of his time. He is the imam of the Muslims. He is the one who defending the religion, Al-Qadi Abu Tayyib, Abu Bakr al Tayyib. So since that time, I started going to that man, so I followed his madhab al -shariya. So when you are giving a wrong, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you could say a wrong idea about a person. Let's say a person of Ahl al-Bida'ah. You go and sit with him. If you are sure about yourself, you're not going to be affected by his bid'ah. You can't guarantee those people who are going to follow your steps and going to imitate you, especially if you are from the people of knowledge. So if they've seen somebody who is, mashallah, a knowledgeable person, accompanying somebody of Ahl bid'ah, if you are a person of knowledge, if you're immune, immunized against his bid'ah, you can't guarantee those people who are going to follow your example. They might go... And do the same thing, they fall into the bid'ah of that person. So you have to be careful what you do with Ahl al-Bid'ah. Now we're coming to the number one and number two and number three from what are the characteristics of Ahl al-Bid'ah? How can I know Ahl al-Bid'ah? Number one, al-waqi'atu fi Ahl al-Athar. They all the time, they speak ill against the people of Ahl al-Sunnah. That's number one character. Abu Hatim al-Razi, he says in Asl al-Sunnah, he said, Alamatu Ahl al-Bid'ah, the sign of the people of the Bid'ah, Al-Waqi'atu fi Ahl al-Athar, that they always speak ill regarding the people of Ahl al-Sunnah. Wa Alamatu al-Zanadiqa, and the sign of those who are Zindiq, Zindiq like a apostate. He says, Tasmiyatuhum Ahl al-Athari Hashawiyah. They call the people of Ahl al-Sunnah, Ahl al-Athar, the Salafis, are to be Hashawiyah. That means making God like a, you know, like a human being. Yuriduna ibtal al-Athar. وعلامات الجهمية and also the جهميز their sign تسميتهم أهل السنة بالمشبهة that is they call the people أهل السنة they are مشبهة مشبهة given an example of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to his human being that we are مشبهة when we say Allah has got a face that means they are we are making him like a human being that's what they're saying مشبهة anthropomorphism if you understand that word. وعلامات القدرية القدرية sign تسميتهم أهل السنة مجبرة that is they say القدرية that we are جبري that we are saying that the people are forced with القدرية which is like مرتزلة they say no each person create his own actions. علامات المرجئة they مرجئة sign they will call أهل السنة مخالفة ونقصانية وعلامة الرافضة رافضة they will call أهل السنة anybody will say what they call us the رافضة ناصبة نواصب that means we hate Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Wal'iyadu billah. And, وَلَا يَحْلْحَقُ أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ إِلَّا إِسْمٌ وَاحِدٌ And we cannot give any name except for أهل السنة to أهل السنة. Okay, now what is the sign of أهل السنة these days? That the people of أهل البدعة call them Wahhabiyya. That's from me, not from the book. That they call the people of أهل السنة, they call it what? Wahhabiyya. But not all the time. Because the railways even call the Darabandis Wahhabiyas. You know that. Anybody who is not a Brailwi, he is Wahhabi, regardless of his sect. So he's Wahhabi. And the ones who are the most severest, you will be astonished regarding the Brailwis in terms of checking them out of Ahl Sunnah, even from the religion. Not us, the Darabandi. For us, we say the Brailwis are deviant sects, the ones who are knowledgeable amongst them and they know what they're saying, they're kuffar. But most of them are what? Misguided. But for the Davandis they say, all Brilos are kuffar. They say Brilos are kuffar. And the Brilos you know that they are worshippers of number one, number one, that is Abdul Qadr al-Jilani. Not our Abdul Qadr al-Jilani, they're Abdul Qadr Our Qadr Salafi. They're Abdul Qadr al-Jilani. Secondly, worshippers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they are, even some of them, they pray towards the grave of Abdul Qadir Jilani. That's how they are. Right. Second sign, also. شِدَّةُ مُعَادَاتِهِمْ لِأَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ وَسُكُوتِهِمْ عَنْ أَهْلِ الْبَاطِلِ That is, their enmity towards the people of Ahl al-Hadith and their quietness regarding the people of Batil. 
This is amazing. Subhanallah. They, all the time when they mention the mention of Ahlul Batil, they mention Ahlul Batil, they don't really say their bid'ah. So this bid'ah, these days, the people of Ahlul Bid'ah, if for example a person of Ahlul Bid'ah is being mentioned, they will shout, what are you saying? Oh, you have to be fair and just. You have to mention his good points. Huh? Do you understand me? Every time you mention somebody of Ahlul Bid'ah, like for example, one day I was called to a university. I was called by somebody from Ahlul Sunnah, Salaf, mashallah, to go and give a talk. And he asked me about a person in front of everybody. What do you think of Sayyid Qutb? So I mentioned Sayyid Qutb. I was, mashallah, the people who were in front of me smiling to me all the time until that question. <laughs> when that question is like throwing a bomb. When I answered that question, now the party had split. People who are following the Sunnah, which are very few, people that are really they're showing the other Sunnah, but they're not al bidah. They're all the time. Ah. So I say, Sayyid Qutb, and I told the Sayyid Qutb, he's not even a scholar to talk about him. He's not even a scholar. But I say that his books had laid the disease until today for those people who are doing khawarij and everything. And I really meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this aqidah that this man had laid the foundation of khuruj and khawarij and all, all of these things in his book, whether he knows it or not, but well, he's not a scholar. So when I said mention Sayyid Qutb, I've never been invited back to the university. That's it. Finished. So they will stop up and down. When it comes to it, so when it comes to the Ahl uh, al-Bidah, please, ya akhi, brother, mention his good points. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks ill about Iblis, or you say, so if you say, come on, mention the good points about Iblis. <laughs> Iblis, for example, he said, inni akhafullah. Did he say that? I fear Allah. Uh, yeah, in the battle of Uhud. Yeah, he Abu Hurairah, in the battle of Uhud, when he saw the angels, in the battle of Badr, when he saw the angels, he said, bye-bye. <laughs> I see things that you don't see. Inni akhaf Allah, I fear Allah. So please fear. So every time, brother, don't curse him, please say that he says, Inni akhaf Allah. Also say that, he, like your brother, he said that he taught Abu Huraira Ayat al-Kursi. And others, and others, and others issues. So I'm just saying that every time I'm going to curse him, I'm going to mention his good points. A'udhu billah. So I'm going to warn the people, I'm going to mention those points which are in him. I'm not going to mention the good points and then I'll hook them to them. But when they come, for example, a person mentioning Ahlul Sunnah and mentioning their mistakes, they'll be happy. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Mention a scholar of Ahlul Sunnah that you're saying ill about him, they will be good. So, subhanAllah. Um, number three, they will seek the help of those who are in authority against the people of Ahlul Sunnah, from Ahl Hadith or Ahl Salaf. Al Imam al Shatibi, in his I'tisam, and it's a great book which is against the Mubtadi'ah. He says, أَلَا تَرَى أَحْوَالَ الْمُبْتَدِعَةِ فِي زَمَانِ التَّابِعِينَ Can't you see the situation and the status of the people of Bahl al-Bid'ah in the time of the followers of the companions and after that, حَتَّى تَلَبَّسُوا بِالصَّلَاطِينَ وَلَادُوا بِأَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا They got the help from the sultans, the ones who are leaders, and the ones who are from the dunya. And he who was not able, اسْتَخْفَى بِبِدْعَتِهِ And he was hidden in his bid'ah. وَهَرَبَ بِهَا عَنْ مُخَالَطَةِ الْجُمْهُورِ وَعَمِلَ بِأَعْمَالِهِمْ عَلَى التَّقِيَّةِ And he showed that he's upon the sunnah, but actually as taqiyya, showing what he is not believing in. As Imam al-Barbahari, he said, Ahl al-Bid'ah, they're like scorpions. Scorpions, he says. They put their, you know that poisonous tail of theirs, underneath the sand. That's how they put it underneath the sand. If they've got the time and the right time, the right place, they'll get that and sting you. But if they haven't got that power, they put it down. Because they don't want to show that stingy, okay, poisonous tail. That's what they did. Once they have the point, the right moment, they will sting you. And we stung, you know, I don't know if you're going to die and become like them or not. Die as in heart die, heart death. Ibn Taymiyyah, who had put him in the prison? And Rifa'iyah, those who are Rifa'is from the, you know, the Sufis in Egypt. A'udhu Billah. And also they have sent to uh, uh, Abu papers at the time, that Ibn Taymiyyah is trying to make a revulsion against you. He's making a coup against you. So he summoned, he wants to make a coup against you. He summoned Ibn Taymiyyah you know, in front of him. You know, what is that? Zahir papers. And he's a well-known well -known leader. He said, what are you doing? Are you trying to make the people hate me and revolt against me? He said, verily, your dominion and the dominion of all the Tatar. He comes from the Tatar. 
all the remaining of the tatar does not worth penny for me. لا يساوي فلسا. Does not worth a penny for me. أنا رجل ملة لا رجل دولة. This is the Imam saying. I am a man of religion. I am a man of God. I am not a man of a dawla. I don't stay in the city where I want a ministry or to be a minister. I've got nothing to do with that. I'm a man of religion. And if the scholar, if their leaders had put their hands in the hands of the scholars, those are the ones who are going to establish the stability of the country. Because they are the ones who are going to tell the people, these are your leaders. And you have to be patient you know, uh, uh, regarding their shortcomings. You have to be patient regarding their tyranny. Because they are the leaders. We have to fight the enemies behind them. It's very important to know that. Because you see, the, the siyasa, the policy of the whole issue, it depends upon two issues. The leaders and the ones who are being led. And those leaders, they have confidence. Bitana. 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 This is bitana. My bitana means the inside of my court, which is close to me. So the close people, the confidence of that leader are the ones that are supposed to be, the ones who are going to be you know, telling the leader that you've done wrong here, this is right, you're doing it, okay? So they're going to be as well, you know, overlook, don't punish this person, don't punish that guy, don't punish this person, this is wrong. And the general masses, the one who's being led, and they've got the scholars. And the job of the scholars is to tell the people, you have to hear and obey, regardless of what your leader is a tyrant, he, does, he lashes you back or takes your money. This is the equation for success. But if it is now the other way around, when the scholars, they list everything for the, you know, for the leaders, okay, no problem. And they will tell the people, hate your leaders. And when you hate, you're going to go to takfir. Because you hate your leader, so we call it tashir. Then after that, takfir, tt. And then the triple T, tafjir, kill him. Tashirun, takfirun, tafjirun. I make it an equation. Tashir makes, you know, a fuss about him. When the people hate him, they make takfir. He's a kafir, taghut. When they make kafir, it's easy to shoot him, kill him. And they see the army as to be kuffar. The army of the Muslims. Like the, some of those people revolted against the leader in Egypt. They called the army of the, the, the Egyptian what? Kuffar. You could kill them, no problem. Egyptian, army, Muslims, they like, kill them. That's what it is. Tashir, tafjir. Takfir, tafjir. The three T's, I call it the triple T. And when those people who are the confident of the leader, they start beautifying in the eyes of their sultans, that torturing the people. Yeah, yeah, torture him more. Okay? Because they want to get closer to him. Yeah, yeah. That's when it is a very bad equation. And that's when you have the disaster. So look at how the people should be uh, behaving. So, Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah. He was put in the prison twice. And even he made Jazahullah Rahmatullahi Ali. Jazahullah Khayram. And Ammat al Islam wal Muslimi, Shaykh al Albani. When he was in the prison, he told his son, Go and bring me the book, writing, and my pencil. And he made as well, which is Muhtasar Sahih Imam Muslim. Jazahullah Khayram. He made it for us just in that prison. Because he wants to invest in his time. He doesn't want to waste his time. And he was in the prison because of the Sufis. He was. He was imprisoned in Al Qala'a, Sijin Al Qala'a Maruf, which is Ibn Taymiyyah, wasn't it? <laughs> so it is like a Salafi Sijin, <laughs> a Salafi prison. Um, I met as well a person who was from Egypt, Egypt, and he was a Salafi, but he came to Jordan, and because he was making the da'wah, he's a knowledgeable person, some of those people from A'udhu Billah, those parties like Ikhwan and everything, they went to the, uh, the, the, the secret police and told him that this man, you know, is trying to do against, you know, the country and everything, which is not true. So they stopped that man and they have expelled, exported him and deported him from that country because of those people. They are from, they will not mind that Sufi doing whatever he's doing in the masjid, but when Ahl al-Sunnah say something, all the time. So those partisans, they will put their hands in the hands of all the partisans of others, but they will not put their hands with the what? With the Salafi. Do you know why like the Salafi, why? Because the Salafi does not keep a closed eye if they see something wrong. As for the person from the party, <laughs> let's say for example, it's a party. Take a party like Hizb al-Tahrir. So if Hizb al-Tahrir, he has one who is in his clan, in his club, in his group. Yet he smokes. And he shaves off his beard. And he looks at pornography. And another person who is not from his club, he is not from his party, he is not from his partisan. Okay? And yet he's, mashallah, beard. 
Sunnah, no smoking, married, very nice man. Who is closer to his heart? The one which has got nothing to do with the deen, but yet he's in his club. Or the one, mashallah, close to the deen, but he's not from his club. Which one? The one from his club. And that is why we say this hizbiyya, this party is actually, what we call it in Arabic, they see with a limited scope. They have a limited scope. As Imam al-Shafi'i said, وَعَيْنُ الرِّضَى عَنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَلِيلَةٌ وَلَكِنَّ عَيْنَ السُّخْطِ تُبْدِي الْمَسَاوِئَةٌ That is the eye which is pleased with something is always overlook the mistakes. But if you are angry with somebody, you're not happy with somebody, you start criticizing. Anything he does, look, look, look. But if you're happy with him, never mind. Keep a, no, keep a closed eye. This is what happened in the parties. So our relationship is not based upon that we have one person and then we have a party and we have a set of goals, one, two, three, and then I'm your leader and then you pay me 10%, huh? 10%. From your salary, okay, that's what it is, a party, and then give you a pledge, okay, and then those people who are outside are our enemies, because they're not one of that with us. This is not a party. This is our party is the head of it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the manager of it is the Salaf al-Salih, al-Sahaba, that's our. So we, and the ones who are in Jordan, and the ones who are in Pakistan, and the ones who are in China, we are following one methodology. We don't have to go and follow one man. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions, that's our manhaj. We love for the sake of Allah, and I love you because of the sake of Allah. You love me because of the sake of Allah. My relationship with you depends upon how close to you to Allah. So the more closer to you Allah, the more stronger should be my relationship to you. The weaker that your relationship with Allah should be is where weaker relationship with you. So this is how my relationship with you, uh, uh, love for Allah, hate for the sake of Allah, give for the sake of Allah, prevent for the sake of Allah. That's how it is. Healthy relationship, not based upon. So when I see something wrong on you, Brother, you're doing something wrong. Not because I'm afraid you're going to leave my party. Never mind. Let him smoke. As long as you're with me. I will be loud. No, brother. Smoking is no good. Because I'm not fearing for anything. I'm saying the haqq and I'm doing it in a way that, inshallah, because I am your mirror. You are seeing your mistakes in me. That's how it is my relationship with you. And inshallah, in due course, we'll give you a lot, a lot of stories regarding this issue. So, here... We find Imam Ahmad, he had his munadara, his debate, and he had said uh, lots of things with Ahlul Bid'ah. And this munadara, inshallah, we will leave it for uh, next week and we'll continue, inshallah, next week regarding the, uh, the munadara which happened with the people at the time of Al-Wafiq and Al-Mu'tasim and Al-Ma'moon. But I would like just to end up with a story before I open the question for answers, uh, questions and answers. The story of Mutarrif ibn Abdullah ibn al-Shikhir to show you how the people of knowledge understand things differently from the people of ignorance. Mutarif ibn Abdullah ibn Shikhir is a, a follower. His father, Abdullah ibn Shikhir, is companion. And he's a person who had been narrated to in Bukhari and Muslim. So a great companion, his father. So the companion, you know, usually will have a little companion. He's not a companion, but he's a little scholar. He's always an engineer, will have his son's engineers, isn't it? Usually the case, doctors will have his son's doctors. So a scholar will have his son's as scholars. This is the case, always. You'll never find, for example, a person who is knowledgeable, his father, for example, is ignorant, very rare. So this man is a scholar. But he said he's to come to a greater man in scholarship because he's older. It's called Zayd ibn Suhan. He said, We used to come to Zayd ibn Suhan to learn from him. One day we came, and while we are taking knowledge, we were about 30 people. A bit less than we are at the moment, mashallah. A bit less. A person came inside. And he had a scroll. And he asked the permission of the, the alim, the scholar, to read what is in his scroll. So he said, go ahead. He said, I've got this and I want to ask if it's okay or not. If you agree, inshallah, we'll go ahead with it. He said, and inside it says, Bismillah, this is something that we agree upon. Allahu Rabbuna, wa islamu deenuna, wa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyuna. That is, Allah is our Lord. Islam is our religion, Muhammad is our prophet, Wal Quranu Gayatuna, and this is the book of Quran is our target. It's exactly the same symbol that some of the parties are using these days. Wallah is it word by word. Wal Quran Man kana ma'ana kunna ma'ah wa malla kun ma'ana kunna ali. Who is with us, we will be with him. And who is with not with us, we will be against him. Do you understand that? It's much nice words. Huh? ya fulam. And then I'm going past into the people to sign. Signature, sign. Now, Mutarrif is a small, young 
boy hasn't really even reached his adulthood. Ghulam. But he's next to the scholar. So now he's coming, now almost 30 adults. MashaAllah, sheikhs. No knowledge. Ah, uh, yes. Signature. Yeah, of course. Nice words. Sign. Sign. Qrarta ya fulan, aqrarta ya fulan. Now they came in, they just before the scholar. They come into this boy, it's called Mutarrif. Na fulan, fulan means an adult. Ghulam, aqrarta ya ghulam. He said, no. <laughs> now all these, mashaAllah, they'll say, yes, yes, and he said, no. So Laylun Suhani puts his hand to protect the child, and they're going to hit him. La ta'jaru al ghulam. No, no, no. Why did you say no? He said, by the one in whose hand my soul. Walladhi nafsi bi Lan uhlidha ahdan. I'm not going to create a new covenant. Siwa al-ahd alladhi akhadahu Allahu aliyya fi kitabin. Except for the covenant that Allah took upon us in his book. Alam yaqul illahu fi kitabin. Allahu rabbuna. Didn't Allah say in his Quran, Allahu rabbuna, al-islamu dinuna. All of it is in the book of Allah. So why are we making a new covenant? And the covenant of Allah, where well, the book of Allah is with everybody. Whereas our scroll is not with everybody, it's only with 30 people. So the ones who are in these groups are with us, and the ones who are the billions and thousands are not with us. We're going to have enmity. So all of them, they realize their mistake. No, no iqlar. All of them, they pulled out the signature. No, no, we're not with this. So the book of Allah is our book. The sunnah of the Prophet Allah is our sunnah. It's amongst the Muslims. So why are we really making our own zawiya? You know, the Sufis make zawiya. Zawiya corner. Zawiya, zawiya, zawiya. So he's making zawiyah. We're making zawiyah. We are with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With, with Allah, qala Allah, qala Rasulu. We don't have a specific party with specific instructions, with specific uh, scheme and system. No. We have the system of what Allah told us to do and what the Prophet sallallahu told us to do on the methodology of the companions. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. As'ar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yanfa'na bima qad sami'na. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.